Hi everybody, my name is Liz West and I work as an artist. I make monumental and immersive site-specific installations with both colour and light. Thank you so much to Design Milk's DMTV Milkshake for having me today. I'm going to be answering some of your questions. So let's see what the first one says. Nervous. What did the Glasgow School of Art teach you that you wouldn't have learnt anywhere else? Good question. I really felt like Glasgow was the perfect place for me. It was an inner city school. It didn't have a campus, so to speak. The artists and the students were allowed to play and integrate their work into the building's structure. Um, no one ever said no, which was really great. Um, however, we were not allowed in the Macintosh building as sculpture and environmental art students because it was too precious um, and listed. But I just think Glasgow was the perfect northern, grey, gritty, cultural place for me with exceptional teaching. Next one. What site would you most like to create a new piece for? I think about this all the time and it is, it is such a hard question because no site is the same ever. And obviously there's some sites that are huge and well known, like I guess the Tate Modern Turbine Hall is like right up there. But people get in touch with me asking me to make artworks in different sites all the time and I'm always surprised and always excited about what they offer and what potential they have. So I'm gonna, it's a bit of a rubbish answer, but there is no most wanted site really. Um, I think there's places all around the world that would be amazing. Gardens, um, plazas, outdoor, indoor, galleries, homes, power stations. It's all good. Next question. What do you most need to learn? A lot. <laughs> um, I would love to learn so much. Um, I would love to learn how to do kind of CAD rendering because that is the missing piece at the moment for me. I have to get other people to do that for me. And I would love to be able to have that as a string to my bow. I would also like to learn to be able to um, let other people have control because it's very much a one-man band and it would be nice to be able to um, have other people and have those conversations. But I need to learn to do that. Next question. What has been your most powerful strategy for working alongside different stakeholders within public realm art? Really great question because this is, this is multifaceted and it's a, a tricky one to get right. So compromise is one, two, be, be responsive to them. You've got to learn to listen. I mean, I think so many artists go in to their proposals or to, into their artwork and, and they're not willing to move or budge, but this is public realm we're talking about. So it's going to be interacted with by all different kinds of people from all different walks of life. So you, you're gonna have to learn to listen to the different stakeholders' opinions and they might have information about that site or how that site is used. It's absolutely critical to how the artwork behaves and functions within that space. So my most powerful strategy is, is listening, but then being able to compromise, but still keeping the integrity of the work, you know, because at the end of the day, once the stakeholders all go home, it's your name on that work, nobody else's. So it's, it's part of your reputation. Next question. How has the pandemic affected your ambition, whether professional or creative? Hmm. I don't think the pandemic has affected my ambition because I've always been very, very ambitious anyway. Um, if anything, it's given me a moment to pause like quite a lot of people. Um, I spent the first three months of lockdown one in the garden. I love gardening. I think it's a very creative outlet. 
I thought it was um, amazing to have um, a garden. Now I've got the most beautiful garden, which I spend a lot of time in, meditating, and, um, you know, after a hard day, just sitting and just going, oh, you know, it's a breathing space. So the pandemic has taught me maybe to, to rest, but it hasn't affected my ambition. Last question. Can you describe the first piece you created in colour and light and how they played the central role? Yes, it was my degree show piece at the Glasgow School of Art. And it was a light trap corridor that you had to walk through and you would see the most intense yellow light shining in front of you. And once you turned around this light trap, um, you saw a, an aperture in the wall, uh, which you would be invited to look through. And beyond that was a mirrored chamber full of yellow objects, full of yellow light, so intense and so saturate. Um, the frustrating thing was you couldn't get into it, um, but it still had an immersive um, factor to it, which was exciting and almost, that was part of it, the fact that you couldn't enter into that chamber. It was like a, an inner sanctum of the artwork, but it was very much about just one color, yellow, and the light was intense to invite the visitor to look further. That's a great question. Thank you so much for having me. I have loved answering all of your questions. You've really got me thinking. Um, follow my work. It's been amazing to be part of this. Take care, everybody. Bye.